Hi, I'm Brian Preacher doing high school biology. Today's topic, the evolution of plants. Plants moved from the sea to the land. Why? Because they had to. The sea was getting filled up, because that's where all of life originated. And of course, all of life is right there. Plants are running out of room, and they're running out of food. So, some of them will get lucky. They'll get land, they'll get food, they'll survive in the sea. Others of them will simply die. And then, we have those that are lucky enough to have those random mutations, let them start coming out onto land. Natural selection in action. The first plants to move onto the land, the bryophytes. These include the mosses, the liverworts, and the hornworts. These depend on water for reproduction. That's why they don't grow so tall. About yay high. Here is a quick diagram of a moss. We have the sporophyte, which is, if you will, the base of the plant. It looks kind of leafy, but these are not true leaves. We don't get them until the seedless vascular plants. And we have the gametophyte. The gametophyte produces the gametes, or sex cells. These will then drift down into the water that surrounds your bryophyte and drift along with the water until they meet up with other gametes and create a new bryophyte. Also, underneath the ground we have bryophyte, which it looks kind of like a root, but it's not. See, roots act kind of like straws. They're actually vascular tissue, which we'll see next, and they pull water up from the ground. Rhizoids will simply absorb it from nearby. And that's how the bryophyte works. Next up, the seedless vascular plants. These also depend on water for reproduction, but they have their reproductive structure located very low on the plant. The rest of the plant can grow extraordinarily high. Some of these created huge prehistoric forests that were simply humongous. But anyway, yes, vascular plants, their big innovation was vascular tissue, things like roots. These are kind of like really, really big straws. What will happen is, the plant itself has water filled up along the vascular tissue, this gigantic straw, and water will evaporate through the leaves. The leaves, by the way, perform photosynthesis. And when it evaporates from the leaves, it pulls the rest of the water along the straw. To demonstrate this, simply start drinking anything with a straw. As you pull water up through it, the rest of the water will follow. And the two types of vascular tissue are xylem and phloem. Xylem is what pulls water up, phloem, nutrients, and other minerals. And this group includes the club moss, the horsetails, and the ferns. All right, our next big innovation is seeds. These allow us to stop depending on water for reproduction. And we have the seeded vascular plants. These include the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Gymnosperm means naked seed. And we're going to explain this a bit more in depth when we get to angiosperms. You'll see why. These use cones for reproduction. And if you look inside any pine cone or something, you might notice these things called pine nuts. Those are actually the reproductive structures of gymnosperms. And this group includes the nettophytes, the cycads, the ginkgos, and the conifers. Conifers, you know those, they drop pine cones. Netophytes, clusters of cones. Cycads, humongous cones. And ginkgos, well, these are actually very cool. They're almost prehistoric. They've been very well preserved in Asian temples. And that's why they really haven't had to evolve that much. All right, next up, angiosperms. These are the protected seeds. Why? Well, once fertilization occurs, the ovary will expand into a fruit, thereby protecting the seeds. Gymnosperms, their seeds are not protected by fruit, and that's why they're naked. So, yes, angiosperms, flowering plants, and anything that has a fruit. To recap, plants need to move from the sea to the land because space was running out in the sea. The first plants to move onto the land were the bryophytes. These depend on water for reproduction and include the mosses, the liverworts, and hornworts. At the base, you have the sporophyte, and from that grows the gametophyte. The gametophyte will drop off the gametes, or sex cells, which will then meet up with other gametes and produce a new bryophyte. Some of these have a rhizoid underground, which looks like a root, but doesn't act like one, because roots act like straws, but rhizoids simply absorb water from nearby. Next up, the seedless vascular plants. These also depend on water for reproduction, but have their reproductive structures located very low on the plant, whereas the plant itself can grow very high, so it can perform photosynthesis and get more sunlight. The big innovation here, vascular tissue. This allowed plants to draw water and nutrients from the soil. It acted like a gigantic straw. The two types were xylem, which brought up water, and phloem, which brought up minerals and nutrients. This included the club mosses, horse tails, and ferns. Our next innovation was seeds, and here we have the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Now that we have seeds, we no longer need to depend on water for reproduction. The gymnosperms are the naked seeds, naked because they're not protected by anything. These reproduce using cones, and include the netophytes, the cycads, the ginkgos, and conifers. The angiosperm means protected seed, and this one, once fertilized, the ovary will swell into a fruit, thereby protecting the seeds. Alright, that's all for now. Again, I'm Brian Pierre. See you next time.